Hi. In this video, we're going to talk about contingency tables. So a contingency table is basically a way to organize raw data so that you can separate out the data based on different criteria. And we can see if by separating out on the criteria, if our data is independent or dependent, and it gives us a way to, again, better, better study our data in more depth. So let's take a look at an example. So we're going to look at data that was released from a Quinnipiac University poll on June 17th of 2020. So fairly recently. Now, when we say a Quinnipiac University poll, it doesn't mean they were polling Quinnipiac University students. Quinnipiac University is actually one of the most respected polling centers in the country and are regularly conducting polls again throughout the country, uh, asking people their opinions on different topics. So for this particular poll, Quinnipiac polled 1,000 adults between June 15th, or sorry, June 11th and the 15th via the telephone. They collected demographic information, including gender, age, political affiliation, location, college completion. And those are, again, how we can separate the contingency table into these different categories. You know, are your answers to the opinion questions going to be different depending on things like your gender? Do men and women feel differently about certain topics or does your age affect how you feel about certain topics and again that's what we're going to look at now they did ask a series of questions regarding the police in america and we're going to look at just one of those questions and the question we're going to look at today is do you think that discrimination against black people in the united states today is a serious problem or don't you think so so that's the question that they asked and then here's the raw data so we're going to separate this raw data out we're going to look at the people that said, well, yes, no, or they didn't know whether or not racial discrimination is a problem. And we're going to look at them based on their political affiliation, whether they are a Republican, a Democrat, or if they identified as an independent, which is actually the biggest category. So the first question, if a person was selected at random, what is the probability that they believe discrimination against black people in the United States is a problem? Well, the key here is going to be random. If I say it's random, then I don't know if they're a Republican, a Democrat, or an independent. I just want to know who answered yes to that question. So we can see that we have the totals, right? The outside columns and even the outside row um, gives us our total. So the total number of people that said yes were 847. And the total number of people they asked down here at the bottom was the 1,226. So out of the 1,226 people, 847 said they believe it is a problem. So to figure out the probability, well, it's just the event over the sample. How many people said yes out of how many people were asked? And we divide those two numbers. So 847 divided by 1,226 is approximately 0 0.691. And again, this is the probability that is typically the answer my math lab wants. However, I like to convert these two percentages because I think they're just more useful when we're talking about them. And so the proportion of people that said yes, uh, about 69.1% of the people surveyed said that they do believe that discrimination against black people in the United States is a problem. Next question, if a person is selected at random, what is the probability that they identify as a Democrat? Again, the key is we're looking at just a random person. So it doesn't matter how they answer the question. I just want to know how many Democrats out of how many people were asked total. And so again, the total number of Democrats were 440. And we still have that same total number of people that they asked, the 1,226. So again, we're going to put that together just like we did with the other one. How many people identified as Democrats? 440 divided by everybody they asked, which was 1,226. And we get the probability of 0.359 or approximately 35.9% of the people identified as a Democrat. Uh, just over a third, which given they were asking, you know, for Republican Democrats or independents, you know, it's roughly a, roughly a third for each one of those, I suppose. Now let's go to the conditional probabilities. So what's the probability a person is a Democrat given that they believe discrimination against black people in the United States is a problem? This is where the table can get a little bit more confusing. The key is to look for 
what is given. So given that they believe discrimination against black people in the United States is a problem, or given that they answered yes, then what is the probability they're a Democrat? Well, that means, again, I can ignore the entire rest of the table. My given, right, that's my conditional part of the probability. My condition is that they had to say yes to begin with, which means I'm looking at that restricted sample size. All right, I'm just looking at that smaller sample of people that said yes. Well, we already saw that 847 people said yes, and then I want to know what's the probability they were a Democrat. Well, this entry here, this 422, these are for people that answered yes to the question and yes to being a Democrat. And then again, it's the same idea. We're just going to divide them. So the probability a person is a Democrat, given that they believe discrimination against black people is a problem. So again, we would set that up, the probability of being a Democrat, given they said yes. And so again, the overlap on top, which is the 422, my sample is just the people that said yes. So there's my 847. And when I divide those two, I get 0.498 or 49.8%. So what that means is that if you know that the person believes it's a problem, there is roughly a 50% chance that they're a Democrat. So again, if you know that that person already believes that discrimination against black people is a problem, it's about 50-50 shot that they are a Democrat. Next question. What is the probability a person believes discrimination against black people is a problem given that they are a Democrat? So again, this may sound like a similar question, but again, the key is going to be the given. Given they are a Democrat, which means I can ignore the Republicans and the independents. I'm only looking at the column that has Democrats. Now again, the people that said yes, well, that's that same 422 from before. It's the same people that answered yes to being a Democrat and answered yes that they believe discrimination is a problem. But we're only looking at people who are Democrats. So now my sample is just the total number of Democrats they asked, which is the 440. Again, we're just going to set this up using our, our probabilities and doing some dividing. So again, what's the probability they said yes, given that they are a Democrat? Well, so again, the Democrats and yes, that same 422. However, the size of my Democrats, well, there's only 440 of those. And when I divide now, I get 0.959 or 95.9%. So that means if you know someone's a Democrat, you are almost assured that they believe discrimination is a problem. And again, it's really, really important to note the differences between those last two questions. If I know they are Democrat, I can almost be guaranteed that they believe discrimination is a problem. However, if I know that they believe discrimination is a problem, it's only about a 50-50 shot that they're Democrats. And again, we're looking at that same group of people who are Democrats and they believe it's a problem. But what changes is our sample, our changes is that given. And then this leads to typically the, the final question, the important question, are these things independent of each other? Is a person's opinion about whether discrimination against black people in the United States independent of their political affiliation? Or will their political affiliation change the probability of their answer about discrimination? If we know their political affiliation, will it change that probability? So the question we really wanna ask is, is the probability that someone says yes the same or different than the probability someone says yes if I know they are a Democrat. So this fancy little symbol, my equal sign with a question mark over top of it, you know, I'm asking, is it equal yet? Well, we don't know. But again, we did the math. We found those two probabilities. The probability that someone says yes is 0.691. The probability that someone says yes if I know they're a Democrat is 0.959. Are those numbers equal to each other? Clearly, clearly they are not equal to each other. They are very, very, very different, which means that a person's opinion is dependent on their political affiliation. All right, whether or not someone believes discrimination against black people is a problem in this country is going to depend upon their political affiliation. Now, this one might sound kind of obvious and you might have even guessed that was the answer before we even did the math, but be really careful. We need to do the math to show that this is true. Um, and in this case, clearly they are dependent. Clearly those probabilities change drastically. 
Now, we would never expect the probabilities to be exactly the same. So usually there's a little bit of wiggle room with independence there because, you know, they're, again, we're not going to have exactly the same number no matter what. But you don't want to just assume things are different based on their political affiliation. Um, in the past, I've, I've done this example with Space Force when President Trump created Space Force, and it didn't matter which political party you were a part of. 72% of people thought it was a good idea. 72% of people in general thought it was a good idea. 72% of Democrats thought it was a good idea. 72% of Republicans thought it was a good idea, which means it didn't matter what your political affiliation was. Everybody thought that Space Force was a good idea about 72% of the time, which happens more frequently than people probably want to admit that there are these topics that Democrats and Republicans and independents all tend to agree on, despite what you might see on whatever type of news or social media you go on. So again, just make sure you're always taking the time to actually do the math to check these things out and don't just make assumptions. All right, I hope this helps with your homework on the contingency tables and we're actually gonna have contingency tables as part of your final, your final project for this course too. So good luck and again, please, ask, please send me any questions you might have.